Okay, many times in a study you are asked to determine the appropriate sample size to give, to meet a given margin of error. The company may ask you to get within 0 0.01 of the mean, or they may ask you to get plus or minus three points of the true population. Whatever the margin of error is, and you've got to use that information to determine what the sample size needs to be. Well, the sample size is always um, determined by using the margin error formula in any confidence interval equation. Remember, the margin of error is the part that comes after the plus minus sign. So in this case, because it's categorical data, if you notice here, we are using Z star, which is our critical point, and the standard deviation formula for categorical data. And we're using P hat as a representation of P. If you remember, when we use P hat as a um, substitution for P, since we don't know what it is, this is called the standard error. Okay? So just as a quick reminder. Um, Again, in uh, many cases, we don't know what the true proportion is, we don't know what p is, and we have to substitute something in for p hat. We haven't done the study yet, so how are we going to know even p hat? Okay, so in that situation, we have two choices. Either if there's some bit bad previous experience, or somebody's done a study similar to this, or you've done a pilot study where you can get an estimate from p hat, you can use that. Or, if that's never been happened, you use p hat as being 0.5. The idea is that the um, this is a margin of error. This will be the um, um, will uh, never be smaller, or i.e. the margin of error will be the largest if you use p hat equals 0.5. If you use anything smaller, the margin of error will be smaller. So we will be safe and we'll make it the margin of error as big as we possibly can make it. Okay. So to determine the sample size for a given confidence level, we would use the formula z star times the standard deviation of a categorical data. Um, has to be less than or equal to a mar uh, margin of error. We would guess what p hat is based on either prior information or in worst case scenarios we would use 0.5. So here's an example of how that would work. Um, let's say we wanted to determine the sample size needed to estimate p within 0 0.03 with a 95% confidence interval. So the critical value for a 95% confidence if we use either table A or table C would come out to be 1.96. Then we would set the equation, um, take the z star times the standard deviation, um, and set it equal less than or equal to our margin of error, which would be 0 0.03. We would then solve for n, keeping in mind that p hat, if we don't know what it is, we would use the replacement of 0.5 wherever we had p hat, knowing that that wouldn't make it any bigger. Uh, the answer that would be the biggest possible our margin of error. And this answer, if you notice, will come, if you use your calculator, will come out to 1,067 1, point something. Let's say it's 85. And so the question is, what do, we, what do we recommend as our sample size? And since this is a minimum, we need to take something a little bit bigger than this to ensure that we have a sample size bigger. So we can't take 1,067. We need to take 1,068. So we would always round up no matter what, and our sample size would then be 1,068. So when dealing with categorical data, we can take our general equation for a confidence interval and actually plug in the values that we know are going to be there for categorical. Our statistic will be p hat. Our critical value will always be z star. We'll find out that something different when we get, get into quantitative data. And the standard deviation formula will be involve the formula where we substitute for p, we use p hat. Okay, and this will be the um, what we call a one sample z interval. Okay, and this is important because on the calculator, um, as I showed in class, we use the one proportion z interval um, confidence interval whenever we want to do this kind of interval. Okay, remember here that we can only use this if both the successes and failures are at least 10, n times p has to be greater than or equal to 10, and n times 1 minus p has to be greater than or equal to 10, and the rule of 10 applies. Our sample size times 10, we have to show that the population is bigger than that. Two very big conditions to check before we can use a one sample z interval. So this is this, the problem we did in class where we, um, we needed to calculate and interpret a 90% confidence interval for the proportion of, we actually looked at white chips in our, in our container. And remember I claimed there were 60% of the chips were white. Okay, and so we created a confidence interval using your sample proportion. So I'm going to use the example 17 out of 40, which is 0.24425, and we created our confidence interval. And as you can see here, this is our p hat plus or minus a critical value for our 90% confidence interval times the standard deviation of our statistic where we use 0.425 as a replacement for p. And we grab our calculator and we find out 
that our confidence interval is in between 0.297 and 0.55. So we would interpret this as saying we are 90% confident that the interval from our lower bound 0.297 to our upper bound 0.55 captures the actual proportion of, and remember I had white chips here instead of red chips, in the container. So if you remember, this is a situation where everybody got an answer that was something similar to this, and if you notice, 60% is not within the confidence interval. So we would have evidence now that Mr. Long lied, and this is a situation where I lied, where I told you it, wasn't, uh, it was not actually 60%, but it was something else. And this is how we can prove or disprove a situation in which we question somebody's claim. So remember, when we're solving these problems, we always use the four-step process, Spanish People dance the cha-cha, state, plan, do, and conclude. State, what, what is it you're trying to estimate? What parameter are you trying to find out? Is it um, P? Is it um, mu? Um, identify the appropriate inference method. In this case, we are making a decision between um, categorical or quantitative data. So we want to make sure the confidence interval formula is correct. Make sure our conditions are met. Remember, our successes and failures have to both be at least 10. N times P and N times 1 minus P have to be at least 10. And the rule of 10 applies. Our sample size times 10, our population has to be bigger than that. And we should always have a random um, sample. And then conclude. We always have to um, interpret the interval in the context of the problem. And that's a memorization thing to get the exact wording correct. But this is how we solve confidence intervals. We always use these four steps as we do that.